This lecture is on the topic of ultrasound of the myometrium, specifically fibroids and adenomyosis. The general content will be to first discuss fibroids and their manifestations, then we'll turn to the diagnosis of adenomyosis, followed by a series of pitfalls, techniques, and problem cases. I have no personal disclosures. Turning first to the clinical aspects of fibroids, the incidence of fibroids is significant in the female population and increases with increasing age during the reproductive years. The cost estimated related to the complications of fibroids is significant in our population. As far as the etiologies go, there are several of them, but basically the important thing is that they require estrogen and progesterone for growth. And so after menopause, they generally shrink and no longer have significant effects for the patient. The risk factors include family history. There is an increased incidence in the African-American population, as well as weight and decreased parity. Symptoms can be significant bleeding, heavy menses, there's pain, the pressure on the bladder, the rectum. There can be problems with fertility, specifically in women who have submucosal myomata. And uh, pregnancy itself doesn't usually affect the, the fibroids, though there may be some degeneration. What do they look like on ultrasound? Well, the vast majority of fibroids are pretty typical, solid, generally hypoechoic compared to the myometrium. And there are a variety of less common appearances, though, that we'll discuss because they can appear rather odd and uh, cause problems with diagnosis. Sometimes it's important to note the location of them, and we'll also talk about some problem-solving techniques. There's a FIGO classification from 2011, which talks about and shows examples of the different locations by number of the fibroids. And while you don't have to really memorize these, the basic concept here is that fibroids can have uh, a partial or complete location with respect to the endometrium. If they're completely within the endometrium, we call them intracavitary, and that would be the zero category. Other fibroids that impinge upon and distort the endometrium, you can describe about how much of the fibroid is involved because that may have um, impact on how they're treated. And then there are the vast majority of fibroids that are significant intramural in their location. Some have a partially subserosal component, and then there's the kind that's highly pedunculated, coming off often by a small stalk. Rarely, but occasionally, fibroids can occur in the cervix. 